And in the hottest of gamer take news to uh, this week was uh, Stadia creative director Alex Hutchinson, who had previously worked on games such as Far Cry 4 and Assassin's Creed 3. Um, does a really good job of not shoving just his foot in his mouth, but basically his entire fucking leg. <laughs> uh, and uh, just like I saw to, your uh, I saw your posts on that. Yeah, and just also, like in a co- uh, just a heads up, Twitter reminded me of this. He's the one that said that female characters are harder to. That animate. was a that was a different Alex. To be fair, oh, it was yeah. Damn it, I I thought that was him. I was like, ah, oh, yes, dig your that guy's a jackass head. too. The other all corp- of the Alexes are jackass. The other corporate Ubisoft <laughs> Alex person. Alex. But yeah, um, so just in a completely unprompted tweet, <laughs> and you you would just imagine people like in very high positions, like in a corporate structure, like Ubisoft, you'd be like, maybe just stick to just saying nice things on Twitter. Don't come out with hot takes. You you only have something to lose, nothing to gain. But like the thing is about that though, Jose, is that I think people, I think people do that because in the day in the day and age that we live in, uh, if you have a hot take about something and you know for a fact that uh, a good amount of people are going to disagree with you, and but on the other side, a lot of people are going to agree with you. It cr- regardless, it creates engagement. It it creates uh, traffic. Um, to whatever outlets that you're, you know, producing content to, it 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 does its job. It does it does the job that it's supposed to do. Oh, that's absolutely and, true. Because now it has Corey, people with Stadia in their mouth. But to but to his credit, Corey, I he's brought more to be with you. But like reading these tweets, did you really want to go use Stadia after this? He, he's no. he's no. brought more attention to Stadia than Stadia <laughs> ever got by itself. So that's something. <laughs> it's was, like that saying. It's like that saying that. Um, it, uh what's it called um bad publicity is still good publicity yeah bad publicity is still good publicity exactly so it's like uh i mean maybe it was a maybe it maybe it was him putting his foot in his mouth but maybe it was something that was calculated and uh meant to create more engagement for stadia because they know that they're they're circling the drain before they even made it out of the toilet. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> go, going to what he's actually said uh, in a tweet, Alex stated that he believes that streamers should either pay licenses or, um, or after the fact royalties for the games that they stream, <laughs> which just completely ignores the fact that streaming is free promotion. And, and just even in terms of the law, it has been so mm-hmm. undisputed for what feels like 10 plus years at this time that trying to make a case against it now won't work because no one has, has done anything to stop it beforehand. There, there's already precedent. But you look at a game like Among Us and, and that game came out two years ago. It just blew up out of nowhere specifically because of streaming. And th- now the developers are just rolling around in cash. They don't even know what to do. They canceled their sequel because they said, oh, well, let's just provide content for the people that bought this game. They're buying um, uh, in-game items and whatnot. It's just completely like I understand the corporate point of view. Just like, oh, this is our product and you should be paying in order to use our product in a transformative way but that exists in like every single medium and it, it, it's just it's just shooting yourself in the foot this is free promotional content it is in an indisputable fact that it is a net benefit to any game sales to have people streaming and promoting right. material and and i like I, I totally i totally understand that and, and um it, i think it goes it, it needs to be said that um, a lot of people see this is the problem I see with with uh, just streaming straight games, um, and it's the same reason I never really liked uh, the whole PlayStation Now service. Um, and that's that's the fact that one, it's it's not even like you're not downloading anything to your system. So I don't feel like it really just depends on your internet service. And not everybody has a wonderful internet. So it's like for some people, like I have a, I have a best oh, friend. Oh, oh, Corey, this is for streaming in regards to, you know, like Twitch streamers, like streaming. Um... No, I know, but I was touching on, I was touching oh, okay, on okay. Uh, Stadia as well okay. and everything. Um, but I was, I was, I was going to, cause we're, we're still talking about Stadia, right? Yes. Unfortunately. I was like, I, I, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but no, I was just going back to Stadia. So basically like I, th- that's the problem with like, streaming games to your console and everything that wouldn't work for people who have slower internet so like one of my really good friends i've known for a long time she doesn't have great internet and it takes like 
a day, like a half a day, if not more, to download a game to her console. So those people don't have that option. And a lot of people just like owning their games. They like flat out buying a game and owning it <laughs> either physically or digitally. Um, so I, I just... I don't know. I don't want to even say that Stadia is ahead of its time because I just don't think that people... I think it is in the regard that that, like, let's say like 20 plus years from now, that that's like the eventual future. But like right now, like any amount of like latency, I that's just a nope for me. I, I, I have no interest in yeah, it. Yeah, and that's that's what I see is like late the latency problems, you know? Mm-hmm. And I have, you know, and I have a friend who's like basically a Stadia spokesperson at this point, and he's all about Stadia. Um, and he's like, oh, I have zero latency. I play in high definition 4K and everything. I'm like, that's great. What kind of internet do you have? Because mm-hmm. that's um, what it comes down to. I know uh, Mesa had previously mentioned that he um, <laughs> he'd use on live back in the day because that's basically what he, what he had access to is it was a web browser and that's a good way to get people in that i mean i would rather take a, a uh, high latency game versus you know not playing whatsoever mm-hmm. um so that's absolutely true for that at the very least but uh i think what doesn't help the situation is that um alex hutchinson the guy that started this whole big old kerfuffle uh he did not take kindly to people very rightfully calling him out he went after um Another Alex, Alex Navarro from Giant Bomb, calling him a douchebag for making a joke out of the situation. It's just like, dude, you're like a high up Ubisoft person. Maybe you shouldn't be going after the press with like explicit things like you're a douchebag. That, that's not, not a good look. Any, well, any and, and he was because he was talking about how stream how streamers should pay for the rights to play games to play the games on stream, right? Mm-hmm. Like like how like I guess how people. Uh, should pay to license certain songs and music, you know, to play during programs. That's just ridiculous. It's like, it's like hundred percent. Like most of the time these days, um, gaming games and, and, and uh, gaming companies are getting, like you said, like your example said with among us, like it blew up because of streaming. Like this is free advertisement for these gaming companies yeah it's and a for parasocial uh it's like a parasocial ecosystem it's, it's free promotion exactly so it's like why are you complaining like you're already getting paid like you're you're, you're already getting paid uh for ev- for every game that people buy because people will watch a streamer and actually go and buy a game that they liked a streamer playing you know and then they'll go play it with their friends or something like that and it, you know so what's the problem mm-hmm and I can like, tell you for a, I can tell you for a damn fact of like let's say Ubisoft games in the future they all require streamers to pay license license fees or royalties. Guess what? No one's streamers, gonna pay that. Exactly, Sarah. No one's gonna mm-hmm. want to fucking touch those games. You're like, nah, we're good. We'll just play fucking fucking Activision games, whatever. Yeah, Fuck exactly. Ubisoft. The pe- and, they will play they will play whatever is easily accessible and is for the most part free to stream. Mm-hmm. That's that's the 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 only thing that you are that they are going to be doing if the, if if companies start doing that is shooting themselves in the foot. It, I it's. Th- <laughs> I think the funniest part of this whole situation is that it has a giant Dwight from the Office vibes because on his Twitter and I guess even his LinkedIn, he has his position listed as Stadia creative director. You're like, oh wow, that's like he's the creative director of Stadia. That's a pretty fucking high up spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, much like uh, Dwight's position is assistant to the regional manager, uh, Alex Hutchinson is a creative director at stu- at Stadia. So he's a creative director for a game studio that works for Stadia. He's not the Stadia creative uh, director. Uh, okay, see, that's tricky wording. If, if I could do a Dwight impersonation, I'd probably read his tweets in that voice. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's somebody who wants to trick people into thinking he's more important than he actually is. Yeah. He left Ubisoft probably just, just, just for the title because the title sounded cooler to him. 